the main difference between F1 and Formula E. Uh, obviously, Formula E is a pure electric car, and Formula One is not. Formula One is they're driving on big tracks. Formula E is driving in the cities. Has evolved over the years in so many ways. With new technology, becomes a new evolution of a race. I mean, this is a completely new concept to people four or five years ago. It's quite a tranquil sensation. It's frantic and it's high-paced, high-tempo. My heart rate's quite high during the race, lots of adrenaline. But at the same time, that's what I love. And Van Dorn, oh, the Sims. 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 Sorry, Sims, Sims is off my apologies. There is a higher importance to this. It's not just a sporting event. Fossil fuels will not be around forever, and we are massively polluting the environment that we live in by using such vehicles. What Formula E is really pushing is the, is the powertrain efficiency. We can go faster for longer, and all of that technology is going to filter into road car. Cars won't need an overnight to charge, they'll need 10 minutes. And they won't last 100 kilometers, they'll last 400 kilometers. And they won't do 50 mile an hour, they'll do 150. That's what the public want, and that's what they're going to be driving soon. It's not a world of sacrifice. It's a much more exciting world because we're making much better use of energy. I cannot predict the future, but it looks much better than it was 10 years ago. Most people are not climate deniers. Most people understand the basics of what is happening because they can see it with their own eyes, they understand climate, but they don't want to do anything about it because they think it's actually going to lead to sacrifice. If we're going to solve the problem, we have to go beyond the idea of individual companies, individual countries. We've got to go to Paris, to the climate agreement that was reached between all of the countries of the world to say we together will work on solving this problem. It's not a world of sacrifice. It's a much more exciting world because we're making much better use of energy. That's not only related to battery or not battery. It is very much related to completely new view on the mobility concepts in the future. Nice second mass of third. Looks like an underclear. Now Boemi is locked. Can't be switched. There's a last jump. There's cheering sound there. I started karting when I was seven years old. So I did 10 years of karting and the more you drive and I was very competitive, I won quite some races in there when I was younger. Then you start to create your own passion for the sport you are doing. I think we can reach like 270 to 80 kilometers. But again, we're driving on street tracks. The car is designed for small corners, small hairpins. That's what the car is best at. It's very strong. Uh, we only have concrete walls next to us. Yeah, the car's used to uh, some hits here and there. Formulary is a concept that was born six, seven years ago, and the idea was to go to city centers all around the world to showcase electric mobility, which is what we are still doing here in season five, which is fantastic. These cars can reach speeds of up to 165, 170 miles an hour, wheel to wheel on street circuits. The main difference between F1 and Formula E, uh, obviously Formula E is a pure electric car and Formula 1 is not. Formula 1 is they're driving on big tracks, Formula E is driving in the city, like we're here in Paris, you know, we are in the middle of, of Paris, which Formula 1 doesn't do. Some people think the electric cars are slower, but it's not true, it drives like a normal car in every single way, braking, acceleration, everything. What Formula E is really pushing is the powertrain efficiency. We can go faster for longer. All of that technology is going to filter into road car. Obviously being battery driven, the power comes from the battery and the motor. The way that we can manipulate how that affects car behavior is, is what makes Formula E quite unique. Faster charging, more capacity in the battery, and more efficiency from the powertrain. And all of those things mean that cars won't need an overnight to charge, they'll need 10 minutes. And they won't last 100 kilometers, they'll last 400 kilometers and they won't do 50 mile an hour, they'll do 150. That's what the public want, and that's what they're gonna be driving soon. A lot of people don't get it, don't understand it. They like the noise of the V8, the V10, and I get it, I, I, I enjoy the noise of those cars as well, but we are massively polluting the environment that we live in by using such vehicles. You know, the performance now of EVs is getting better and better, thanks to a series like this, where we can improve the software of EVs improve their capacity, their range, and their speed.
For the fourth consecutive season, the world's most competitive motorsport, the all-electric ABB FIA Formula E Championship welcomes you to the City of Light for the Paris E-Prix. Top nine drivers in the championship are covered by just 13 points with six races remaining, including four in the Vostopina European swing, and the tension is ratcheting ever higher. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to season five of the Envision Virgin Racing Summit. We have a packed couple of hours for you here at the Chateau Form in Paris, ahead of the race this afternoon, which I gather is still going to be an exciting one. What Formula E does is it provides for people within an urban setting a, a framework to think about what it is that they're doing, what decisions they're making. And that idea of electrification is something that's going to have to run through all of our lives to far more of an extent if we're really going to address this problem. The value of Formula E is the fact that there is so much of a push on uh, technology innovation that is actually helping not just the race, but it's actually taking that innovation from the race to the road, right? right? But the um, other thing that is very important is not just the technology, but precisely as you were saying, the lesson that we cannot do this in isolation. You have to focus on track, you have to focus on your job while you're here. There's a lot of things to do. I mean, a lot of people say like you go to a track, you jump in the car and you drive, but that's just not the case. There's no room for error in Formula E because it's just so close, it's so tight. You have to push to the absolute limits of the car and your ability in order to get a good position. One millimeter over, you're in the wall, one millimeter under, and you're at the back of the grid. It is a mental sport in the sense that you can have a lot of bad races. Like last year, I had some, some unlucky moments which you cannot control. It's incredibly close, really competitive, but I enjoy the fight. The Paris E-Prix, the 2018-19 season's eighth round of Formula E will be underway. Still hasn't quite gone, has he? Formula E draws a lot of attention, and if you want to make change, you need the attention. These catastrophic environmental uh, impacts of, of climate change, that's causing people finally to wake up to the idea that you know, human activity is having an impact on the environment. So the greatest challenge in thinking about green is the fact that you don't see the benefit immediately. So it comes down to, are you courageous enough to drive that change? White and blue, Neo, we go on board with Sam Bird, who is up behind Jean-Eric Verne. The two former teammates battling over 12 places. They come up into turn two. Felipe, the managing director, but look at the, the attachment where it attaches in the middle of the car. I think it's just worked there. I'm thinking he quite through the box. Hail, hail. It is really the hailing. The message is done, Gabriel. Brian's getting information Reduce on the grip, radio. Every ring. Reduce grip, every ring. Look, there you can see the front right strut is broken. Brian's is leading the race, and off is Bird. Sam Bird and Gary. Maybe Van Dorn. Oh, the cops is off. Sims. Sorry, Sims, Sims is off. My apologies. Roland's involved as well.
embrace. Look your brakes, please. Look your brakes. Try to roll it. Thank you, Dario. Thank you. It's the hardest race of my life. Hardest race. I can't really describe my feelings because it was a very crazy race. It was the most difficult race I've ever done in my life. I, I felt the, the hail on my hands when I was steering. I felt that there was yeah, some proper hail on my hands. So yeah, it was quite crazy out there. And formally, it's, 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 it's growing. And it's, it's a future from, from motorsport and the future from the, from the world we're living in now. There's more and more electric vehicles on the road. And uh, we are helping everybody forward to, to be here as a driver, competing in Formula E. Electric, full electric cars, it's something you would uh, dream for. Well, with the environment that we only have one world, we need to take care of it. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of things going on in the world and we are giving them an example to, um, to everyone really, to produce green energy and, and to move the, to, to help the world in general. <laughs>